privilege to be here. My husband has left the building, um, so he's going across to your Century City Church. Um, and I honestly cannot believe that this is my life, that I am here with you. It was never, ever my plan. Um, we always joke, we say, we didn't ever plan on going to church, never mind leading a church. And here we find ourselves leading a church and only God can get a hold of two raucous children from the rural homelands of KZN and move them to Centurion to plant a church. I don't know how that happened. Um, only God can change lives in that way. But it's a great privilege to be here. And my story is simply a story of saying yes to Jesus. And that's how I end up coming to be with your beautiful pastors who have blessed us so much. You are in such wonderful hands. They are awesome, awesome people. Um, and they don't know quite how much they've blessed us um, in this journey that we have been on. Uh, so it's wonderful to be here. I thought I'd introduce you to my kids um, because my great plan in life was to be a stay-at-home mom. I just wanted to have babies. And if I couldn't do that, I just wanted to teach deaf children how to speak. Those were my two life plans. I worked at Carl Dutoy Center in Tigerberg um, many, many years ago, and I thought I was gonna retire working there. So those are, that's my family. Gareth, that's James, that's Beth, that's Joel. And we left them at home with their grandparents. My parents drove from KZN to Pretoria to be with my kids so that I could be here. So the world had to move around a bit in order to be here. But in my praying for you leading up to this, I wanted to ask you, I don't know what your lens of church is. I don't know what you believe about the church. I don't know how long you've been coming to church and maybe you're only just joining online and you never actually intend on coming to the physical building. I wanna ask you to take off those lenses of church. I had a, a Bible that I put on my desk at work in our office, and this is my Bible Bible. This Bible's got my scratchings and my scribblings and post-it notes. Apparently, I have a love for post-it notes. I don't know why, but my Bible's full of them. And then I took another Bible that I'd been given and I put it on my desk at work, and it's just not the same. It's not the same, it doesn't flip so easy, it's, the pages aren't kind of you know, worn a little bit, there's no markings. And I felt like God said to me, look at the Bible through a new lens. Open the Bible with a new lens. So my heart for you this morning is to open your eyes to a new lens. And you maybe know the scripture, so just take off everything you know about the scripture and let me read to you John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, in this way, he gave his one and only son that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Now, you're in a series called We the Church and I love the church. Like I say, it was never a plan to be in church, never mind lead a church, but I love, I've fallen in love with the church. And the church would not be the church without Jesus. Without Jesus, the church is, you could be in a cycling club or a golf club or a swimming club. You could be, you're in Cape Town, so you could be a kite surfing club, whatever. You can belong to a community without having Jesus. But the church exists because Jesus came to this earth to make a way for you and I in our brokenness to find freedom, in our hurt to find healing. This Jesus came with eyes to save. And once he'd done what he needed to do here, he sent his Holy Spirit so that the church can be birthed. It is his plan. The church, in all her strangeness that can happen in this world, is Jesus' plan for earth at this time. And the church is beautiful. The church is beautiful because of Jesus. The church is not beautiful because of people. If you've been hurt by the church, if you've seen the messiness, the behind the scenes of church, if you've read in the news about what has happened in churches around the world over time, and you think, what on earth? The church is a wreck. Please, can I ask you not to judge the church by people. Please will you judge the church by Jesus. It's his church. People are gonna mess up, but Jesus is everything. 
And as I was praying for you, I, I saw the eyes of Jesus in my mind, the eyes of Jesus as he looked at you, at you life changes. The eyes of Jesus are upon you. His eye is upon you in this season. His eye is upon you. He loves you dearly. And no matter what you believe about church or Jesus, maybe somebody dragged you here kicking and screaming, I want to tell you that the eyes of Jesus are full of kindness. When Jesus looked at Zacchaeus as he was sitting in the tree, Jesus' eyes were full of friendship. And maybe you need friendship today. The eye of Jesus is full of friendship towards you. And when he looked at the woman at the well and her shame and her brokenness, the eye of Jesus was full of compassion. And when he met with Peter after Peter had um, denied him, the eye of Jesus was full of restoration. And when he hung on the cross and he gave his life for our sins, for our brokenness, for our shame, the eye of Jesus was full of forgiveness. And as Jesus came into the place where Lazarus had just died and he looked at Mary and Martha, the sisters, and his, his eyes were full of grief. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Jesus knows and his eyes are full of the very thing that you need. He looks at you with compassion, with kindness, with friendship, with forgiveness. He covers your shame like he did for the woman caught in adultery. He covered her shame by lowering his eyes and telling everybody else to go, basically, because they are without sin. The eyes of Jesus are upon you, and he has everything that you need. Jesus has everything that you need. So please don't judge the church by human people, brokenness, and whatever. Take off the lenses of what you know about church and look at the church through the eye of Jesus and let the Holy Spirit come and wash you with a fresh excitement for what Jesus wants to do in you in this local church. So my message is about just say yes. Just say yes. And don't, you don't even have to say yes to church. Say yes to Jesus. Start there. So I mentioned that we um, didn't plan on going to church. I didn't grow up in church. I'm not a church kid. Um, I grew up in Crichton, which is in the middle of nowhere. And um, my father still does not believe in Jesus, and my mother did. So we were allowed to choose if we want to go to church. And church was pretty boring, so we didn't really go. Um, as I finished my trick, I met Gareth, and we came and played the fool in the Winelands in Stellenbosch and got jobs and settled here in Cape Town. And um, after some, just two months before our wedding, my father-in-law passed away, and we realized that actually we needed to get our life on track. And, and my father-in-law's final words as he lay dying was, it's so wonderful to be with Jesus. And that was a testimony that we needed to hear and we came to a church in the southern suburbs and we asked all our questions. We had lots of questions about church and Jesus and what we should and shouldn't believe and we got baptized in a pool somewhere in the southern suburbs. I wouldn't be able to find it if I tried. And then God did this weird thing where he plucked us out of everything we knew and everybody we knew and moved us to Pretoria. I went kicking and screaming. I did not want to go. I was out of my comfort zone. I never wanted to live there. Um, and that was where our journey began, where God got a hold of our hearts and we fell in love with the church. We fell in love with Jesus and his beautiful, beautiful church. And we joined a wonderful church called Urban Life. And the very first Sunday, I walked in to church. We met Craig. Craig and Andy lead that church. And Craig said, oh, my wife wants to start a preschool for underprivileged kids, and she doesn't know the new curriculum, so would you please um, come, let me introduce you. So I met her, and she said, I can't pay you, but please would you come and help me start a school for underprivileged children? And I said my first big yes to Jesus. And so we started a preschool, started with seven kids, took it to 120 underprivileged children. I principled that school for eight years, I loved that school. I still love that school. 
beautiful place of God's hope and restoration. But that was my first yes. And then the church decided they were going to plant a church into Centurion, a site. And we said our second yes. And we said we'd go on the church plant. We know nothing about church. But we live in Centurion, so it'll be closer to home. So we'll go. And then they said, who's going to lead kids ministry? And um, Gareth said, well, I don't know anything about kids. But Amy's a teacher, so we'll lead kids ministry. I said, well, I don't know anything about Jesus. How am I going to teach these kids? It's amazing what you will learn when you have to teach children about Jesus. I'll tell you, you'll learn about him because you have to. When they're sitting, staring at you, you're going to have to give them answers. And so we started writing our own curriculum. Uh, Gareth is an engineer at that point, working full time. And then they asked Gareth if he would do the announcements in church. And he said, no, don't be crazy. Um, And anyway, over time, they managed to convince him to do the announcements. And then um, over time, they invited us to come be part of some of the meetings, to come and, you know, help us figure out things and operations and, I don't know, important church things. We didn't know what we were doing. We had no idea what was going on. Um, But we fell in love with the church. And little by little, God just kept opening doors for us to say yes. And then the pastor that was leading that church became very, very sick. And he um, had to go to America to find the treatment that he needed um, in order to, to get well again. And so Craig and Andy came from, left the Midrand Church, came to Centurion, and they um, moved the church from a school hall into another building. There were 60 people. Some of them left. They didn't like the new building. I don't know why. Um, and we were ordained onto eldership at that point. So that was another yes. And then Craig and Andy went on sabbatical for three months. And they said, you've got this. You know, hold it together while we're gone. We both had full-time jobs. We had two very small children. We, had, we were unchurched. We didn't know church. So we just made it up as we went along. We just kept saying yes and kept showing up. And Gareth preached and the church grew. And stuff happened. And God definitely had to move because we were clueless. And Craig and Andy came back from sabbatical. And they said, oh, the church is growing. People are showing up. Nothing's broken you don't need us, we're going back to Midrand. And that's how we ended up leading a church. Only God can do something like that. And we still think our heads still spin because we're two farm kids that live in Pretoria that lead church, like how? But God's great adventure is one of just saying yes. And during COVID, we um, pulled all the sites into one site and we did church online and we had to bunker down to, to survive. And I remember sitting, loading the washing machine with dirty clothes, closing the door, and I slid down the wall and wept because I'd lost my love. I'd lost my church and it hurt. I missed my people. I couldn't lay hands on the people that I loved, couldn't give hugs, couldn't say prayers. I missed my people. And church online just wasn't the same. And I realized how much I love the church. Anyway, fast forward, God started to speak to us about maybe starting something new. And it terrified us. It was never our plan. And somewhere along the line, we both left our jobs and went full time. Sorry, I forgot to say that. So now church is everything for us. Um, And so we started a journey of speaking to Craig and Andy. We said, we feel like God's stirring us to plant a church. And we went on a journey speaking to various pastors from around the country. What do you think? What is God saying? Could this be God? And we were blessed by Urban Life. They have been incredible to us. They blessed us and sent us on our way. Um, And we planted in February last year. And we're just having so much fun. I love the church. We've been blessed with incredible, incredible people who love Jesus and love his church. And every week people are coming in and finding Jesus and getting restored and finding hope and healing. And I just can't wait to see what God is going to do next. And I tell you all of this because I want to ask you, there's a quote from a woman called Mary Oliver. And she says, tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. What is it you plan to do? I planned to do very little. 
I planned to be in my comfort zone. I planned to have an easy life. I married an engineer. He had a master's degree. He was doing well in corporate. I planned for the easy life. I never planned on standing on stages. I never planned on being seen. I like that. I'd sit up there somewhere. I like that place. Nobody can see me. Be quiet. My relationship with Jesus, him and I. But I've learned that our relationship with Jesus has worked out here. It's worked out in community. And we irritate each other and we rub each other up the wrong way. And we have to be shaped and formed by Jesus because the community does that to each other. The Bible speaks of iron sharpening iron. And we were designed to be within community. So what is it that God is calling you to do? What is your next yes? It, it matters. Saying yes matters. Joining a life group is terrifying. Going to somebody's house, it's weird. I don't know, only Christians will walk up to strangers and say, hey, on Wednesday, why don't you come to my house? You know, and we're gonna talk about Jesus and the Bible. It's strange. Say yes. It'll change your life. Say yes to putting out the chairs. Say yes to making the coffee. Say yes to joining the sound team or the lights team or the video team or the kids team or whatever. Just say yes because God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your life. Say yes if you're online to getting in your car and driving to church. Say yes. It will change your life in the most profound and beautiful way. The church is God's plan. And he's asking you with his eye upon you, What is it that you plan to do with your life? If I'd planned to do what I wanted to do, I don't think I'd be happy. I I honestly don't believe that I would have been happy to do what I planned to do. And I never planned to do this, and there's nothing else in the world I would rather be doing. There is nothing in the world I would rather be doing than loving people and pointing them towards Jesus. That's all. Simply love people and point them towards Jesus. So what is it that God is calling you to? Because his church matters and the world is broken and he needs every single person that's sitting in this room and every person that's online to say yes so that other people can meet Jesus, so that other people can find hope, so that other people can find healing. Because here's the thing, the story is bigger than you. The story is bigger than me. And God wants to invite us into this great redemptive plan for his church and for the world. And he wants to invite you into that story. And your yes could mean a million salvations. I don't know. Your yes could mean one person finds healing. Your yes could mean one marriage is restored. Your yes could mean that somebody finds the hope that they have longed for their whole lives on their deathbed but you know that you'll see them in heaven. Your yes matters because the story is so much bigger than you. As I was praying, I wanted to um, give you a charge for the future. So my call to you is, what is it that you're gonna say yes to? What are you going to say yes to? What has Jesus laid on your heart? Can you just start with a simple yes? And then I'm going to charge you out of Isaiah 61. Because in community, in church, we find that we, we, we get shaped and we get uncomfortable and it can hurt and it can be hard. And, we get, um, and all that makes us more like Jesus. The goal for our lives is to become more like Jesus. And Isaiah 61 is, is Jesus. This is speaking about Jesus that's coming And so if we're becoming more like Jesus, then this is our call. This is what God is calling his church to do, to be. So I'm going to speak this over you. Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord God is on me. The spirit of the Lord God is on you. Life changes. The spirit of the Lord God is on you. Because the Lord has anointed you to bring good news to the poor. Life changes. God has sent you life changes to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of God's vengeance, to comfort all 
who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, festive oil instead of mourning, and splendid clothes instead of despair. And they, you, life changes, will be called righteous trees, planted by the Lord to glorify him. You, life changes, will rebuild the ancient ruins. You will restore the former devastations and you will renew the ruined city and the dev devastations of many generations. Our nation needs you, life changes, to be this. Our nation is desperate for people to rebuild, restore, and renew. And my call to you today, I believe is God's call to you, would you be the hands and feet of Jesus? Would you just say yes and help to be part of the solution of this beautiful nation that we call home? Would you just say yes to Jesus? And would you just say yes to loving his church in whatever way he calls you to? Won't you stand? I believe some of you may be terrified, terrified to say yes. And I don't know what God's plan is for your life, but I love to see people walking in God's purpose. I love to see people take next steps. I love to see people find that God's put gold in them and then step into their purpose, owning who they are and what God's put into them. So what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Would you just say yes? I'm gonna pray this Isaiah 61 over you. And if you feel like God's working in your heart, if you, if you feel terrified, if you feel encouraged, if you, if you want more of Jesus, won't you just lift your hands to receive this as a blessing over your life? I wanna speak it over your hearts this morning. So Jesus, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you that you have given everything, that we just have to come into your presence, be empowered by your spirit, and you can do great and mighty things in us, and you can do great and mighty things through us. So I pray, Jesus, as your eye is upon this church, as your eye is upon your people, I pray that you would give them great courage to say yes to the call that you've put on each person's life. I pray that you would give great courage to make their life count, to make their life count for you, Jesus, that when they enter eternity, they would know that you would be standing there waiting to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. So Spirit of the living God, would you be on your people of life changes? Would you anoint them to bring good news to the poor? Would you send them to heal the heartbroken and to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners? Would you proclaim the year of the Lord's favor over your people and the day of our God's vengeance to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, festive oil instead of mourning and splendid clothes instead of despair? And would you call them righteous trees planted by the Lord to glorify Him? Would you make their name, life changes to be one of those places that people know they can run to, that they can find your healing, that they can find your hope? Would you help Life Changes Church to re rebuild the city of Cape Town? Would they restore what was formerly devastated? And would they renew the city of Cape Town and the nation of South Africa for your glory and honor? In Jesus' name, amen.